Hello. I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the crime club. I'm the librarian. Fear came first. Yes, we have that crime club story for you. Come right over. easy chair by the window. Comfortable? The book is on this shelf. Here it is. Fear Came First by Vera Kelsey. The very intriguing story of a house that was divided by fear until united by death. Let's look at it under the reading lamp. Madrona Place was the real estate empire that Grandfather Wales had built and died building. A square mile of rolling fields and woodland and lakes. And yes, a huge gray house, the manor house, the gloomy headquarters of death. It was at this house that Thor Satteland arrived one blustering evening in March. And as he waited in the icy wind, he thought of the warm reception he knew he'd get. The door opened. Yes? Oh. Well, what do you want? Well, I'm sorry. I thought... Well, I was expecting... Speak up, will you? I'm freezing. I'm for Saturday. Well, I'm still freezing. Hilda Swinson's grandson. Oh. You see, I was expecting her to open the door, and I... Well, you'd better come in. Uh, yes, thank you. Well, quickly, if you don't mind. Oh, that's better. How you Vikings can stand the cold... Now, let's take a good look at you. Oh, uh, couldn't you tell me about my grandmother mm, first? Pulchritude with muscles. About my grandmother, Miss... Uh... Wales, honey. First cousin to Flair. But you can call me... Who's that, Eileen? A man, Beulah. And he belongs. Holder's grandson. What? Yes. Wouldn't you like to meet him? Thank you. I have other things to do. <laughs> Isn't she charming, Thor? My aunt, by marriage. An outsider who married a son of the late Grandfather Wales. Late? Oh, didn't you know? The Lord of the Manor was tucked away in his beloved real estate six weeks ago. That nice old man dead. Mm -hmm. Terrible, isn't it? And he was only 87. Uh, I, uh, I'm going to look for my grandmother. <laughs> Don't lose your wind doing it. What? She's dead, too. No. Three days ago. We buried her this morning. But she... Well, only last week... Where's Fleur Wales? You can take my word for it. I want Fleur. All right. She's upstairs in her room. Do you know anything about this place? Yes, yes. Then you ought to know where the living room is. Wait there. I'll tell her you dropped in like the handsome plague. Thor, you know what we thought of Hulda, Grandfather Wales and I. She was more than a housekeeper to us. She was the mainstay of this house. Yes, I know that, Fleur. Everything revolved around her. I had no mother or father except for Hulda. And that... Please. I'm sorry. I've been trying so hard not to go to pieces. In six weeks, first grandfather... <laughs> would you... Would you rather not talk about it now? I must talk. You've got a right to know how Hulda died. And why she died. Why? Yes. It's very important. It might explain many things. After Grandfather Wales passed away, they came... You met Eileen. And Beulah. Well, there's another one, Ruby Devers. Hulda resented them. They treated her like a servant, and she wanted me to send them packing. Yes. But I couldn't. They're relatives, and every single one of them seems to think that she's got a claim to this property. Oh. Hulda wouldn't understand my position. She became sullen. And then four days ago, she disappeared. Oh, good grief. Oh. Wasn't that the day the big blizzard began? Saturday morning. Oh, yeah. I was reading about it in Chicago when I... 
Uh, go on, Fleur. I thought she'd gone to her cottage at Cranford, the one my grandfather built for her birthday years ago. I drove there. Well, but don't but tell me she got lost in that storm. I don't know what happened, Thor. But she never reached Cranford. Oh, my Lord. Late Sunday afternoon, some men taking the shortcut through the woods found her. Ah, that poor old woman. <laughs> what did the doctor say it was? Well, the coroner told Sheriff LaRue that it was a heart attack. But there was a pretty bad bruise on her forehead. Bruise? She must have fallen against a tree. Oh, I wanted her to be patient. To wait until I could find out what those women really expected me to give them. If they had any right to any part of the road of play. Fleur, was my grandmother afraid of these women? <laughs> afraid? Uh, it's, it's just an idea. Would you know? I'd say that she wasn't. Or she didn't seem to be. Well, how about you? Are you afraid of them? I don't know. There's nothing they can take away from me. This property is mine. Grandfather Wills left it to me in his will. But... Yes? In the event of my death, it goes to them in equal shares. Then you are afraid. All right. Are you going? Yes, I left my luggage at the bus stop in Laketon. Oh, then you're coming back. Well, I don't have to see Chicago again for a week. Good. I'll drive you to Laketon. No, I want to take that shortcut through the woods. Now? In the dark? <laughs> Don't worry. I'm not going to have any heart attack. Uh, just leave the front door unlocked. I might be a little late. Now, look, Sheriff LaRue, I, I don't like to say the coroner made a mistake. But you're saying it, Mr. Satterland. Maybe my grandmother did have a heart attack. It's possible. She was 73. But that bruise on her forehead... What are you trying to do? Make out a case of murder? Well, I'm just wondering about it, that's all. You got any reasons for wondering? Yes. She gave 50 years of her life to Matrona Place. She was nurse and housekeeper to the old man. She kept him alive. You don't have to tell me, Mr. Satterland. He was even too sick to walk. And you know what she did when Flora's father and mother were killed. Yeah, a couple of months after the girl was born. She brought her up like her own child. Uh, she wouldn't have left her. But she did. I don't believe it. That ain't evidence, Mr. Satterland. Well, well then, maybe this is. Huh? What's that? A letter I received from my grandmother two weeks ago. Yeah, read it. Okay. <clears throat> Things is very bad here at Madrona Place. I do not think I know what to do. You come and I will tell you what I see and what I know. Come right away. It is... <clears throat> What's this word? Dangerous. Oh, yeah. Did you uh, answer this letter? A week ago. Huh? And Hulda Swenson must have had your letter before she was... before she died. And she was expecting me today. Who knows about this letter? Mm, just you and me, I think. You didn't show it to the ladies at Madrona Place? Not yet. Well, don't. And say nothing about it. All right. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to pay them ladies a visit. Maybe I'll find out which one of them knows more than the book says she ought to. I'm going upstairs to bed, Beulah. Good night, Eileen. Uh, but, Fleur, aren't you going to wait up for our handsome Viking? The housekeeper's grandson. An ex-housekeeper's grandson, Beulah. The class distinction was buried this morning. Eileen. Sorry if I've spoken disrespectfully about your sacred cow. But Thor, the god of thunder and lightning, what of all holler I could make with that guy? Good night. Uh, Fleur, what is it, Beulah? Look into Ruby's room, please. She went to bed with a sick headache. She might want something. You can do that yourself if you like. I've had enough of all of you. Well, one word about her precious holder. Oh, it isn't that, Eileen. Oh, no. It's that man, Thor Sutherland. Since he came here tonight... She's been full of vitamins. And very difficult. Why do you suppose she sent for him? I don't know. Did she send for him? Of course. She means to get rid of us. How? Oh, leave it to her. She'll find a way. Nobody can get rid of us, Beulah. We go with the land, like topsoil. I don't trust her, Eileen. You don't trust anyone. 
including Ruby and me. What? But that's all right. I don't trust you or Ruby either. Any day I expect to look in the mirror and find a knife in my back. How can you say that? I open my mouth and out it comes. Very well, if that's all you think of me. Oh, Beulah, let's not get sentimental. I'm thinking of my future, our future. We'll never make any progress until we learn to trust each other. <laughs> and all this because a man came to the house. He told Fleur he was going to Laketon to pick up his luggage. But that was more than three hours ago. He walked the wood path where Hulda's body was found. Why did you say that to me, that way? You're worried about something, aren't you? Oh, I don't want strangers meddling in our business. And that man... Is that all? He should have been back two hours ago. Beulah, you, you fascinate me. I really think you're frightened. Oh, nonsense. I I'm puzzled. You should be, too. I am. Oh? Why, only one thing. What's that, dear? Who killed Cock Robin? <laughs> What's the matter? Someone was strangling me with my silver necklace. Yes. I had to scream. I was screaming in my dream. I couldn't breathe. <laughs> you scared the living daylights out of me. I'm sorry. I feel so foolish now. What's the matter? This reading lamp. I turned it off before I fell asleep. Are you sure? Yes. I remember. Uh, let me see your throat. Oh, it was a dream. Uh, those two scratches aren't. What? Yeah. Fleur, where did you keep that necklace? I dropped it on the dressing table. No place else? Isn't it there? No. Well, then look on the chest of drawers. All right. I know I didn't put it away. I took it off and I dropped it. I'll go, Fleur. But, Thor, it must be. You mean it should be. Oh. Uh, you weren't dreaming, Fleur. Somebody tried to kill you. Oh, no. When you started to scream, she got scared and ran out with a necklace. Who? I'm going to ask Sheriff LaRue to answer that question tomorrow. Just keep your door locked tonight. Good morning, Sheriff. Hello, Thor. Oh, I got frost in my bones. The ladies up yet? Oh, they're in the dining room. Good. Yeah, take off your coat. No, thanks. I ain't staying any longer than I have to. Well, suit yourself. Always do. Well, good morning, ladies. Well, Sheriff LaRue, we're just having breakfast. Would you like to drop into a cup of coffee? Eileen, please. Beulah, my dried-up conscience. Uh, where's the other one, Fleur? The other one? He means Ruby, darling. She's still sleeping, Sheriff. Somebody wake her up and get her down here. Why, Sheriff? I want everybody present, Fleur. I, uh, changed my idea about the way Holder Swenson died. Well, I got evidence it might have been murder. Murder? But what evidence, Sheriff? Beulah, don't you know it's the law that asks all the questions? Eileen, when I want advice from That's you... That's all I... right, ma'am. You better go upstairs and get Ruby, Miss Eileen. I like you less every time you open your mouth. Now, see here, you bundled up Mackinac. Go ahead. I've got a jail with vacancies. Well, since you put it so nicely. All right, now. But Sheriff LaRue, why should anyone want to kill Holder? Because she had information. Detrimental to Fleur, of course. Now, uh, wait a minute, Beulah. You're going to say that she killed my grandmother. Young man, I had rather you wouldn't speak to me after what I saw last night. What's that? 
he and... Oh, it was too disgraceful. Now, look, ma'am... I'm not going to talk about it, Sheriff. They can tell you if they want to. I've got something else to explain. Yeah. I suppose you've been wondering what Eileen and Ruby and I have been doing in this house. Sort of. Well, we've been trying to reestablish our claim to this property. Huh? Uh, what about it, Frank? I don't know. Grandfather Wales left Madrona Place to me. It's in his will. Then they arrived with notions... Don't believe her. The three of us are not crazy. Oh, please, I didn't say you were. But nothing has ever been said to me about any of you. I'm willing to let you prove your claims. I haven't tried to stop you. No, you haven't. I let you examine my grandfather's papers, his files. I've exposed the entire house to you. I could have put you out any time I wanted, but I didn't. I didn't even suggest it, did I, Beulah? Oh, well, you were not doing it out of kindness, Fleur. No. I wanted to be fair with you and the others. Hulder didn't agree with me. And she's dead. And last night, one of you tried to kill me. What? Oh, she's lying, Sheriff. With my silver necklace while I was sleeping. You could still see the marks on my throat. Look. Yeah. I was going to tell you about it, Sheriff. Well... And all because of some real estate. That's worth about a half million dollars. Oh, it's you again. Now, where... But you haven't heard the whole story, Sheriff. Old man Wales was my grandfather, too. But I didn't live here with him. I couldn't spin his top when it came to making a will. That's what I've been having to put up with, Sheriff. But it wasn't because you loved it. It was because you knew our grandfather had no right to leave all this property to you. He didn't buy it with his own money. You tell him, Beulah. His three sons and Ruby paid for half of it. And one of his sons was my husband. And one was my father. You get the idea, Sheriff? The kids chipped in to make a home for the old man, but only on a promissory basis. Yes. When Grandpapa died, and he did, his sons, or their leftovers, would get what they're entitled to. And that's all we want. But surely if that was the understanding, your grandfather would have kept records. That, my sinewy Viking, is what we contend, but we haven't been able to prove as yet. Well, that's not my department, unless it adds up to murder. When's Ruby coming down? She isn't. Now, see here, you tell her... You tell her. I don't know where she is. Why? She's vamoosed. Bag and some of her baggage. Oh, my goodness. Are you thinking of last night, Beulah? Yes, after Fleur screaming. What about it, ma'am? Eileen and I came out of our rooms to see what was wrong, but Ruby didn't. And maybe she didn't have to. If she knew why Fleur was screaming... Eileen, are you suggesting... That Ruby tried to kill me? I'm not suggesting, Fleur. Wait till the law sees what I found. Uh, where are you going? To get something I left in the hall. Now, handle with care. And don't get any fingerprints on it. Now, look, miss, if I've got to listen to any more of your corny I'll jokes... I'll wrap the handkerchief and... Presto, a paperweight. There's blood on it. What a team. We can't lose the pennant. Where'd you get this? On the floor in Ruby's closet. She must have forgotten to take it. Yeah, I'll bet. Like she forgot to take herself. You must think I'm a fool. That's my paperweight, Sheriff. I don't care who it belongs to, Fleur. Ruby asked me if she might use it in her room. Huh? When? Several days ago. Before Hulda Swenson was killed? Yes. But, Sheriff... This is what it was done with Fleur. Huh. I'd better see about finding Ruby. But, Thor, why must we go to Cranford? I told you, Fleur, I want to see my grandmother's cottage. Yes, but why? Well, Ruby disappeared. She killed my grandmother, tried to kill you. Do you think she's hiding there? I don't know of a better place. Wouldn't it be slightly ridiculous? So close to Madrona Place? No one would think of looking for her there. You thought of it. So? So Sheriff LaRue most likely thought of it, too. But you're not going to Hulda's cottage to find Ruby. No. You believe them, Eileen and Beulah, about their claims to Madrona Place. Now, I'll wait a minute. You know that Hulda was very methodical. She used to keep records of everything. Yes, but that doesn't Please mean... Please don't deny it, Thor. You're going to the cottage to see if you can't find something to prove their claims. Don't you want them proved? Yes. If they can be. But if there's anything at the cottage, I'd rather the sheriff found it. Well, that's what I'm not... what I'm going there for. Oh? My grandmother was crazy about keeping diaries. I want to find out if she's left one of her little books at the cottage. 
Why? She knew something, Fleur. What? There's no case against Ruby or anyone else without it. Come on, Fleur. Yes. <laughs> you don't have to be so tame. I don't like what we're doing, Thor. Now, if you're going to worry about what the sheriff will say. Good heavens. Look at this place. Cyclone couldn't have done a better job of tearing down. <laughs> Everything except the walls. Let's get out of here, Thor. And even they've been ripped wide open in places. Thor. What? I can't bear to look at it. I'll, I'll wait for you in the car. Ah, I'll go with you. Somebody with the same idea as mine beat me to it. Calder's cottage. If there's any evidence in there, it's gone with a killer. I think we'll find Sheriff LaRue and tell him about this. No, please take me home. You can tell him about it later. <laughs> Those men, what are they doing on my property? Oh, I don't... Oh, uh, there's Sheriff LaRue. Let's ask him. Sheriff! Sheriff LaRue! Huh? Oh. What's happening? Well, what are those men doing? What are they looking for? Oh, there's nothing to get excited about, Fleur. Those are some of my boys and some boys from the DA's office. Where have you been? Uh, Cranford. My grandmother's cottage. Oh, yeah. Pretty messy, ain't it? Oh, you've been there? Not me. I sent one of my boys. He gave me a first-hand report. But those men, Sheriff, what are they looking for? Ruby Devers. What? Sheriff. It's just a hunch, kiddies. I've got an idea she never left this property. I don't get it. It's very simple. This is sparsely populated country. Once the people in these parts see a face, they never forget it. And nobody I talked to seen Ruby Devers' face today. But, Sheriff, that doesn't mean she's... It could, Mr. Sadler. There's only a couple of places that lady could have gone to. On the one of them's the woods. She wouldn't have a chance in there against this kind of cold. Well, what about Lakes and the bus stop? Well, she didn't get there, son. How do you know? The man at the station told me. He knows everybody that lives in this neck of the woods, even if they're only visiting. And he's seen no Ruby Devers. Hey, Sheriff. Huh? You better come here. I think we found something. Okay, be right there. Oh. Now you take her into the house, Mr. Satterland. I'll be along as soon as I've got something to tell you. Isn't anybody going to talk? Sure. Ask a question and we'll give you 20 answers. Eileen, there goes my conscience again. Well, this is no time to be flippant. With the sheriff expecting to find Ruby's dead body out there. Would you cut your throat if he did? Thor... Yes? Will you look out of the window, please? Oh, now, listen, Flo. Oh, go and look out of the window and be thankful she doesn't ask you to jump. Why don't you shut up for a change? I can. It's no hardship among friends. That must be the sheriff. Well? We've got her, Flo. Where was she? In the well. Good heavens. Pussy in the well. Who put her there? That's what I mean to find out, Miss Eileen. From the person who done it. You know? Yeah. She was already dead, Flair, when her body was thrown in there. How, Sheriff? I want the killer to tell me. Don't you know how she was killed? I know, Mr. Satterland. Well, does anybody want to talk to me alone? Uh, would it help if I say I've known the killer since early this morning? What are you talking about, Sheriff? I knew Ruby Devers didn't kill Holder Swint. What? I think you're bluffing. Why didn't you make an arrest? I wasn't ready, Miss Eileen. Ruby had to be found first. Are you ready now? Mm-hmm. Then make it, why don't you? Yeah. So am I going to have to do all the talking? Well, if you want a prisoner. How about it, Fleur? Oh, I don't know, Sheriff. Is this your silver necklace? The one you were choked with last night? Yes. Where did you find it? The diver found it. In the well. Was used to kill Ruby Devers. One of them. No, Mr. Saturn. Fleur. Oh, you're crazy. She was almost murdered herself. I think when she gets ready to talk, she'll tell a different story. But those scratches on her, on her, her throat. Her own nails did that, didn't they, Fleur? Sheriff LaRue, 
You've never been so mistaken in your life. I've known you for a long time, young lady, as a neighbor. I thought you'd want to talk to me alone. If I had anything to say. You have. But I'll say it. You killed Holder Swenson. Now, look here, sir. Sit down, Mr. Sutherland. I'm talking now. You killed her, Fleur, because she knew that you would kill your grandfather. Of course. It was your job to bring him his medicine. The last attack he had, you let him die without the medicine. You'll have to prove that, Sheriff. Holder knew it. She also knew that your grandfather left no will. No will? But the paper she told us about, the paper that was filed... A forgery, ma'am. Holder Swenson knew that, too. On the day of the old man's death, she lived in terror of the girl she had raised from the cradle. That's why she wrote to you, Mr. Satterland. Fleur, is that true? He hasn't proved it yet. But he can't be making it up. It's too much. Don't worry about the proof. I've got it. Hulda's diary. What? Where did you find it? In a safe deposit box in Cranford. And with it, Fleur, were memos of all the money the old man had received from his sons and Ruby Devers for the development of Madrona Place. All right. I killed Hulda. And I forged the will. I didn't want to divide this property with strangers. It was my home. A half million dollars worth. Why did you let the old man die? He was going to make out a will, giving them shares, 50%. I lived at Madrona Place all my life, and he was going to let them take over my home. What about Ruby Devers? She saw me strike Holder with that paperweight. And then she tried to force me to sign a paper, giving her half of this property. I had to kill her, just as I had to kill Holder, because she was going to tell Paul what I'd done. Come on, Fred. Now they're going to take Madrona Place, my home. They're going to take away my home. Well, don't ever mention that word to me again, Beulah. What? That's better. Thor. Yes? Would you like to tell me a story? About what? You can go now, Beulah. You're making a crowd. And so closes tonight's Crime Club book... Fear Came First, based on a story by Vera Kelsey. Stedman Coles did the radio adaptation. Roger Bauer produced and directed. Sidney Smith played Thor Sutherland. And Helen Shields was Fleur Wales. Grace Coppin was Eileen. Irene Hubbard was Bueller. And Cameron Proudhon played Sheriff LaRue. Oh, I beg your pardon. Hello, I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the crime club. I'm the librarian. Yes, come over a week from tonight. Good. We have a very unusual story about a dead man who captured a murderer. It's called Dead Man Control by Helen Riley. In the meantime... Well, in the meantime, there is a new Crime Club book available this week and every week at bookstores everywhere. Yes, it's available now. Fine. And we look for you next week. program came from New York. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.